Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm in the truck today because we're on to buy another truck or hopefully buy another truck. I know it's been uh, quite a while since I've done one of these. Uh, I haven't really been buying any trucks lately. I've been focusing on building them. So uh, that's what we've been doing on the channel here. So, uh, but when one of these pops up for sale, you, it really takes my uh, attention. And uh, this one I was able to work a deal on. Hopefully we're gonna go take, take a look at it. It's gonna be kind of a mess. Uh, to get loaded up and everything so we'll talk about that later if I get that, the deal done hopefully but it's one of the most rare uh, bump sides that uh, I'm going to be able to get I know there's some other rare variants that are uh, uh, derivative of Canada and uh, the Mercury bump sides I'm so far away from the Canadian uh, border and uh, Canada in general that uh, I'm probably unless I have one shipped in or I'm never going to find one, especially one out in the wild. So this is probably the rarest bump sight that I'm going to be able to get uh, my hands on. And uh, this truck does have uh, ties to Canada uh, in, in uh, where it was built. So that might give you a clue. But anyway, guys, we're going to go see uh, what we can get done. And I'll fill you guys in when all that happens. Okay guys, what I'm gonna go look at is an F26, so that means high boy crew cab. So uh, that's what makes this thing so rare and desirable is it's a high boy crew cab. Uh, all the crew cabs you've seen on my channel in the past have all been two wheel drive variants and uh, those are rare as well, but uh, the high boy crew cabs are another level of rare. Uh, this one is, is in particular is a 71 model and they made, uh, I think, 664, I think is what the Marty Report said. I already pulled a Marty Report on it. And uh, so uh, only 600 and some odd uh, high boy crew cabs in 71. The earlier ones, there's going to be less, obviously. Uh, I think they actually made a little bit more in 70. I think there was like 700 or something, and then 71 it dropped down, and then in uh, 72 it picked back up a little bit. But, but anyway, guys, I'm going to go check it out. Uh, unfortunately, the... Uh, the cab and bed and everything is all stripped down and uh, it's at a body shop and I have to uh, uh, look at that first then we're gonna go look at the frame the frame has already been uh, uh, work done to the frame and rebuilt and it has a uh, really big uh, built-up 460 in it and uh, uh, that's all mounted to the frame and stuff so uh, if we do end up making a deal which I hope we do and uh, uh, we have to load up the frame take it to the body shop then load the cab and everything on the on the frame load it back up on the trailer and then we have a bunch of miscellaneous spare parts we have to load up in the truck and on the trailer so uh, it's going to be one of those uh, pack it everywhere and anywhere it fits kind of a deal so uh, hopefully we get it all packed on the truck and trailer and then we we can haul it safely uh, but first step is going to be taking a look at everything and uh, verifying all the numbers and uh, making sure everything is correct and uh, in order because uh, for one this is the most expensive truck I've bought uh, on the channel by far and uh, it's also the most valuable so if you know if if the VIN numbers aren't right, the VIN stampings on the frame and everything like that are not right, it kills a ton of the value. So uh, I had to verify all that stuff, then we'll make a deal, and uh, hopefully we'll get this thing loaded on the trailer and headed back to uh, the shop. So I'll see you guys when I get something done. Well, guys, we uh, made a deal, and she's back there on the trailer. I don't know if you can see it back there. But uh, it is a real deal F26 Crew Cab High Boy. And uh, all the numbers checked out, the uh, frame bin, which is the most important one. The frame bin matched the title, and uh, uh, the, the cab is actually the original cab as well, so the, the door tag matched as well on that. So that's, that's not as big a deal, but uh, it is nice that it's uh, all numbers matching as far as the cab and frame and title goes, so all those are number matching. It's not the original bed. Kind of an interesting thing about this truck is uh, it had a conversion camper done on it so the whole back end was a camper and it had a pass through through the back of the cab and had uh, bucket seats that swiveled and turned around and stuff so uh, it, it was born from Ford with a uh, style side bed on it and then uh, at some point it was converted to a camper with a pass through so not like a truck bed camper it was like the whole back end of the truck was a camper 
but it was a short bed so I thought that was really interesting that a short bed truck had a camper conversion on it like that um, I'm gonna text the guy and see if he has any pictures I forgot to ask him over there see if he had any pictures with it on the with the camper on it but uh, I haven't seen any uh, hopefully he has some because I thought that'd be really interesting to see uh, it uh, took us a long while to get the truck all sorted in one spot and loaded up and everything uh, I think it took us a total of four hours and uh, we had to go to one spot get all the all the uh, front end parts and small parts and we had to go to another spot to his buddy's house to pick up the frame and chassis then go back to the body shop and put the cab and bed on the frame and then load the unload the frame put the cab and bed on the frame and then load it back up on the trailer then strap up all the doors down are in all the hoods and fenders and two tailgates and all that kind of stuff so I have it all loaded down trucks loaded pretty loaded down and uh, I'm heading back uh, the, this truck it has a uh, 600 cubic inch big block Ford uh, engine so uh, it dynoed 806 horsepower on pump gas it is a monster of an engine uh, I'm not gonna be using that on this project I don't think we're gonna go back to 100% factory original on it but uh, when we get back to the shop, I'll show you that engine. It's pretty, uh, it's, it's a work of art. It's really nice. And, uh, uh, if it, you know, if it was something other than an F26 crew cab, we might consider leaving that in there because uh, he built that thing to be a truck engine. And he said the power curve is flat. And he said it makes its peak power at 5,000 RPM and uh, 806 of the power. So, man, that thing would move that truck pretty good. Uh, back by a ZF6 uh, transmission and uh, a... Uh, uh, 205 transfer case so all that stuff's not original unfortunately but uh, luckily I have all the stuff to put it back to uh, factory original uh, everything besides a few of the pieces on the rear leaf springs but uh, I think I'll be able to find some but uh, anyway guys I'm gonna quit talking and uh, knock out some miles and get back to the shop and uh, I'll show you guys this truck when we get back to the shop and uh, let you take a peek at it so see you guys in well, here you go, guys. Got it back in the shop. Got back kind of late last night. And I've uh, been poking around with this thing a little bit. It is uh, a really, really nice cab. Uh, this would be a really nice cab, even if it was a two-wheel drive. So, pretty nice that it is the uh, the bump side uh, high boy with the original frame and the original cab to the frame. So, uh, that's pretty neat. They did put uh, the body shop it was at, they did put four pans in it. And they put cab mounts. And they actually, they showed me the old floor pans they took out. They really weren't that bad, and the cab mounts were actually good. They just replaced them just because they were they were doing all that and just putting new metal in it. All the rockers and everything are good. B-pillars are good, and the roof is good. So it, it did have a camper conversion on it. That's one thing that's funny about this truck. It had a camper on about it, not a in-bed camper. The bed was gone, and it had like a short bed camper with an over-the-roof portion, and it passed through right there. And that's why that piece is welded in the back so that I, unfortunately i didn't get any pictures of it with the camper on it i thought that'd be funny to see it did leave the factory with a uh, bed on the back but at some time in its life it was con converted to a camper so this bed is not original to the truck and uh, uh the doors in the back there the doors are in really nice shape as well this truck was really nice before it was taken apart but uh, like i said it had that camper on the back and uh, no bed but uh, the, the rear doors, uh, they're just really nice shape for a crew cab. Um, the frame goes, there's a lot of modifications to the frame. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to uh, do a lot of uh, converting back to uh, original high boy on the frame. Uh, it has a GM 14 bolt in the rear, so that's definitely gotta go. He did put Super Duty leaf springs in it and uh, put different hangers on it. So I have to put the factory hangers back on it. And uh, for the 205 transfer case so that's got to go for a dana 24 and the uh, same thing on the front here he has a uh, dana 60 snow fighter front axle and uh, changed the leaf springs and uh, the the uh, cross member here and he actually notched the uh, the uh, under engine cross member there for the oil pan on this big 460 so uh, uh since this is a such a rare bump side crew cab truck i want to make it uh, back to factory original and not a resto mod type like this is so we'll be going back to stock on all that stuff but that's no pr big problem i can do that it has a 78 79 steering gear conversion on it power steering conversion um i'm not sure if i'm keeping that or not i would like it to be original i'll have to see how much of a pain it's going to be to convert that back 
Um, the engine will show you that once I get it unwrapped, but it is a 600 cubic inch monster of a big block Ford uh, Dyno 806 horsepower. It's a big uh, race motor basically big cubic inch So uh, it, it's pretty uh, sweet unit But uh, it definitely is not going to stay in this truck because it's going to go back to factory original So that engine does not fit the build I have in mind for this thing. So We'll be pulling that out and doing something else with that same thing with the wheels and tire combo uh, they aren't going to stay. We're going to put some uh, factory style wheels on it. Just kind of my style anyway since ma You know mainly just because of the rarity of this truck. I want to be I want to preserve the history of it So we're going to be going back to stock with it on this side The body shop guy was getting ready to spray sealer on it and uh, he didn't get it done And uh, that guy told him to quit because he had it sold so I have to do something with all this bare metal here and it did rain on me a little bit, not rain, it kind of misted on me for about an hour when I drove home. But luckily it didn't, uh, looks like it got all dried off before it did any damage. A little bit of rustiness in the bed here. But, uh, you know, that's just surface rust, but you don't want it to sit like that. So I'll be uh, trying to do something with the bed and that bare metal just to try to preserve it because it'll be, uh, it'll be a minute before I'm able to get started on this thing. Although I'm thinking... I don't want to get going on this thing pretty quick because uh, for one, the condition of everything being blown apart, just let it sit around. You're going to be start losing pieces if you don't organize it perfectly. Uh, and two, it's uh, really, really nice and it's pretty far along as far as the bodywork on the cab and everything goes. Uh, the, the fenders are ready to paint. He found new Ford fenders, no rust in them. And uh, the hood was ready to paint. So this one is, uh, I think I'm going to move it ahead of my 67 crew cab just because it's uh, further along and uh, can get it knocked out sooner In the back of the truck. We have all the extra pieces that came with it. We packed it down uh, Pretty heavily. I got everything kind of in here pretty tight, but uh, uh, The core support here with the high boy uh, radiator mounts. So that's important to have uh, He did get a radiator for it, but it's aluminum. So I'm gonna have to get a uh, aftermarket uh, copper radiator for this thing uh, the 71 grill which is nice uh, with decent grill inserts. I haven't looked at them real close to see if they're restoration quality, but uh, uh, at least it's there and it's not uh, all broken up. Uh, it did come with a factory uh, air conditioner box, although it was not listed on the Marta report. So there's the uh, uh, factory air conditioner box that would be if you ordered it from the factory with air conditioning. But uh, once again, like I said, it wasn't on the Marta report, so it was added later on. It might have been, you know, when it was bought, they said, I want air conditioning too. I have the controller. I might have put it somewhere else because it was... Uh, I'm not quite sure where it's at, but uh, the switch panel for the, the heater controls has AC on the on the switch panel for the factory one. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get this thing unloaded and uh, start digging, digging around in it. And I'll uh, show you guys a little bit more once I can do that. Well guys, I got the truck unloaded in uh, here in the shop for storage. Uh, this is our old workshop. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the projects go in here to be stored, the ones that can't be stored outside. So here's my uh, ultimate crew cab project, uh, waiting on the start on the body work on the cab. So uh, engine and chassis in here. And uh, here's 69 High Boy. Uh, this is uh, originally gonna be my forestry service truck. This may, that may change, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, that's pretty far down the road and uh, I have this truck sitting in here obviously now uh, uh, show you the engine here since we didn't get to show you it when it was on the trailer it was all covered up but uh, it is one heck of a power plant right here pretty neat uh, uh, pretty awesome engine since uh, I think it's he said 806 horsepower on pump gas 89 octane so uh, that is really impressive. Of course, it gets all that from the displacement, 600 cubic inch uh, Stroker FE. It has a uh, motorsports, Ford Motorsports block in it, uh, Blue Thunder heads, Holly EFI sniper. It has been dyno tuned, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty, uh, uh, pretty impressive motor. Although it is not staying in here, uh, you know, this, since the, the rarity of this truck, the significance of it, you know, we're putting the original FE back in here. Since we're talking about the rarity and significance, I have the Marty report here. Uh, Marty does a really good job of getting these things knocked out, especially if you do the uh, the rush service. Uh, the guy, I was going to buy this truck the day before I was leaving, 
Uh, he was supposed to be getting me the VIN number all day, and at like five o'clock in the evening, he uh, finally texted me a picture of the VIN, and I got the uh, the Marty report ordered, and uh, it was like five five o three or five o five or something. But when I got it ordered, and I had this in my inbox in my email at nine o'clock that evening, so he got it knocked out for me. And uh, right there is the uh, important part: six hundred and sixty four with crew cab option. So that is with all the uh, seventy one high boys. Only 664 of them were crew cabs. So this is a pretty uh, significantly rare truck uh, for that aspect because it's a it's a high boy. That's what makes this one so uh, so desirable and so rare is uh, just because it's a factory high boy crew cab truck. So um, uh, I'm really happy I was able to take this home. This is like a holy grail bucket list truck for me. Uh, it's, you know, I knew I was going to have one at some point. I just didn't know when. And uh, this one came up and... Uh, the opportunity to own one just uh, kind of fell in my lap and uh, we made it happen uh, this is the uh, the most expensive crew cab I've purchased I did the math if I all the other crew cabs I bought if I add them all together it still is uh, not as expensive as this guy was so you know it's it was significantly expensive and uh, a lot of it is because of that engine right there so uh, that's kind of how this deal was able to be done is uh, that engine and uh, the value of that engine. And uh, so I am selling the engine uh, to recoup some of the purchase price of this truck and to aid in the restoration of it. So uh, this engine is for sale. If uh, anybody is interested in it, it is not cheap uh, and it is not a baby engine. It has a lot of horsepower and uh, you have to have something that is ready for that amount of horsepower to put it in. So it is uh, not for everyone type of an engine, but if you do know somebody or if you yourself are interested in it, I will uh, definitely uh entertain offers i do have a price in mind if you're interested in it uh, i'll let you know it would be a really good uh, drag and drive engine i think so uh, like uh, drag week or uh rocky mountain race week that kind of a deal because it is a pump gas engine but it does have uh quite a bit of horsepower so anyway back to this truck i have everything kind of organized here um as organized as i could be just throwing it in the truck we do have a new tailgate here i don't know if i showed you that when it was on the trailer and uh uh, some West Coast uh, Junior mirrors here. That is not on the uh, Marty report here. So I think it just had the uh, little the little bitty mirrors. I think one of them You probably can't see it. It's still on the door You can see that right there the little bitty like half ton mirrors like that right there It's still on the door. So I think that's what it was came with and then they put these on later um, Bahama blue paint which you can see that right there it's going to be a really nice pretty blue uh you know we're, we're in the middle of doing our harbor blue high boy truck uh the bahama blue is a deeper blue kind of a darker blue but it is still really pretty you know you can see some of the original paint here on the dash really nice pretty blue um what else can i show you on this that's important it did come with a 360 originally so it's not a six cylinder truck um blue vinyl vent seats with a style side so remember i said this thing came with a camper uh, camper conversion on it uh, or it had one on it when this guy bought it but it, it came from the factory with a style side bed so it, uh, uh, it I don't know when it was converted if it was later you know several years down the road or if it was bought new and then they discarded the bed and built the camper on the back so I don't know I know you could you could buy one without the bed you could buy a cabin chassis truck so uh, I don't know that aspect of it but we are going back to a style side bed I'm not putting camper back on this so so that's that uh, it had the HD front axle, 44 HD. That's not uh, anything surprising. Uh, it was ordered in Denver, or the ordering district was Denver, which makes sense because it was sold new in uh, Gillette, Wyoming. Uh, Stockman's Motor Company. Um, and uh, nothing really crazy other than that stuff. Uh, you know, the, the other numbers are low just because it's a uh, high boy. So uh, these numbers are pretty low when you compare it to a tool drive truck just because there is far less high boys out there. But as far as the bed, I think I'm actually uh, I actually have the bed already sold. Uh, it's it's it is a really nice bed as far as a short bed goes. So if you're building a truck and need a short bed, it is a, a a nice one to start with. However, for for this truck, and I'm going 100% original as nice as I can make it. I think it's going to make more sense to just start over new with the bed and. Uh, uh, just buy all the new bed pieces and build a bed from scratch so everything's perfect and we're not fighting 
like see this rust this little bit of rust that's in the the seam weld there and the, the all these dents and especially the dents in the bed on the inside you're not just doing body work for days it is it will not take very long to add up the cost of a new bed brand new bed with uh, fixing this old one so so I think we're just gonna go with a new bed since and for one this isn't the original bed so it it has no uh, historical value for the truck uh, and for that matter um, it came with new inner fenders the uh, the core support up here is good there is some rust spots in the uh, usual places down low but uh, the, we do have the high boy radiator standoffs here so those are uh, nice uh, so we'll be using this core support I'll probably patch some few spots I think the grill the inserts are good uh, the grill shell has a few dents and dings we might do a new grill shell but the inserts I think are usable Let's see if I can give you a peek this truck sets really high off the ground so the inserts are pretty good I didn't see any breaks in them uh, we might repaint them just so they have a new nice finish on them but uh, the, uh, the inside trim here is uh, look to be good and the inserts are good so that's good because these don't these aren't reproduced if I didn't tell you that the 71s anyway so yeah uh, big project and uh, there is a lot to do to get this thing back to factory original so it's gonna be a big project in that aspect uh, as far as the chassis goes lots to do with the chassis uh, we have to uh, fix some spots where we cut the cross member to, to clear the oil pan I can show you that right here that's that's notched right here to clear that oil pan the the steering gear they notched the cross member to, to fit the steering gear I'm not sure if I'm going back to stock I really would like to um, but if it's gonna be a huge pain to do so I'm not going to mess with it um, at the, in the front cross member here so so all that stuff I'm definitely gonna go back to stock with as far as the axles we're gonna put a Dana 44 back under it and uh, utilize this Dana 60 snow fighter somewhere else 14 bolts gonna be sold off can't have a GM axle around here I just uh, can't do that uh, so we're gonna get Dana 60 and put back in here I actually have a spare high boy uh, axle that will totally rebuild and put in this thing so it has the correct uh, shock mounts uh, for the high boy and uh, all the bits and pieces like the the lift blocks the shock towers the axle brackets the uh, uh, frame brackets all that kind of stuff I have to uh, piece together and put back for this thing luckily I have almost all of it um, I don't have the rear spring hangers um, I have a frame that has them on it but it's a roller and I have to make it not a roller to get the hangers off of it so we'll decide that at a later date see if i can find some other ones to use so i don't have to cut up a good frame but uh, anyway guys this project's going to be fun but it's going to be a few months before i get to it but uh, definitely you'll see it here on the channel when i do get to it so hit that subscribe button so you know when that happens thanks for watching guys give me a thumbs up if you like this truck and uh, let me know down in the comments what you would do with it but anyway guys i'll see you guys next one thanks for watching